Welcome to the topic of ISO service cell search. In this video, I'm going to show you how to efficiently find cells that are intersect by ISO surface. Here, let me define the ISO surface cells. ISO surface cells are cells that contain part of ISO surface given the ISO value V. The surface is intersect by ISO surface if the minimum value among its vertices is smaller than the ISO value and maximum value among the vertices is greater than the ISO value. Because we assume the value within the cell changes linearly, we can be sure that isosurface must intersect through this cell. Previously, we described marching cubes algorithm. It is algorithm that will perform an exhaustive search. That is, it will go through cell by cell to locate isosurfaces. While this algorithm is very simple, it is not very efficient for large-scale data set. In fact, it's not necessary to go through every single cell. This is because for a given ISO value, to extract ISO surface from a three-dimensional data, only a small portion of cells are going to be intersected by the ISO surface. More precisely, for a volume that has n by n by n cells, it's a three-dimensional entity because surface is a two-dimensional object. You can imagine the average number of ISO surface cells, that is, the number of voxels that are intersected by ISO surface is going to be n squared. So this is the ratio between surface versus volume. So this is a formal problem statement of ISO surface search algorithm. Given a scalar field with n cells, say C1, C2 to Cn, and assuming we know each cell's minimum and maximum value ranges, where A1 is the minimum value and the B1 is the maximum value for the first cell. What we are trying to do is we're trying to find all the cells CK where the minimum value AK is less than the ISO value and the maximum value BK is greater than the ISO value. Here C is the ISO value, that is the value that we define the ISO contour. So there are many algorithms in the past being proposed by researchers for efficient search of ISO surface cells. Today I'm going to give you an overview of those methods. Basically, we can divide the method into three categories. One is spatial subdivision. That is, you divide the domain into small subdomains, and uh, you check whether each of the subdomains is intersected by the isosurface or not. The second type of method is to divide the entire value range into subranges, because iso value can only intersect with one single subrange and you only need to check the cells that fall into that range. The third method is to perform contour propagation. So now let's pay attention to spatial subdivision. That is, we're going to search through the domain efficiently to find out the possible cells that are intersected by the ISO surface. To do this, we're going to, first of all, subdivide the space hierarchically into different levels of subdomain. Then at each level, we are going to keep the minimal and the maximum value for all the cells within a subdomain. So in an example here, we have a 2D field, and the same principle is going to be applied to 3D field. We are going to cut the dimensions evenly into two halves. For 2D data, we have four subdomains generated. For the entire domain, we store the min max values, and then mm -hmm. for each of subdomains, we are going to store the min max value. And then for each region, we recursively subdivide into four more sub-areas, shown in blue in the example. And for each sub-area, we record the min-max value. And we keep going until we arrive at the block that has used specified minimal size. To search for the isosurface cells, what we are going to do is we are going to start from the root of the tree and then if the root's min max value contains the ISO value, then we know the ISO surface exists in the domain. Then we are going to check each of the four children here and focus on the sub area that has min max value contained ISO surface. So in example here, we start from the top level and we go to one of the black nodes. Then we check again to see whether the min max value contains the ISO value. And then we go to one of the blue nodes, and until we arrive at the base level, we have four red nodes, 
and then we extract ISO surface within each of the nodes if it exists. So this is very efficient because we are able to skip a large portion of the domain without having to go through the cells at all. And previously, researchers have reported that the complexity is in the order of k log n divided by k. Here, k is the output isosurface size, and n is the total number of the voxels. The goal of designing isosurface search algorithm is to be output sensitive. That is, the cost of the algorithm is proportional to the number of isosurface cells. If the isosurface only intersects with a small number of cells, then ideally the algorithm should only need to touch those cells. And that's the goal, of course. And uh, a lot of time it is not quite possible to only search those cells without knowing enough about the data. Now let's look at the next category of approach, that is divide the cells based on their value ranges. And we're going to search the cells in the range that intersect with the ISO surface. So this is called range search. Because the ISO surface cells are the cells that have minimum value less than the ISO value and the maximum value greater than the ISO value. So you can imagine that we can take the global minimal and the maximal values, the range, and the divide into different intervals. Because ISO value is a point in this value line, so only one interval after we divide the entire range will contain the ISO surface. So you can imagine you can arrange the cells and then put them into their corresponding intervals. And after the user specify ISO value, you only need to go through the cells within a particular interval that contain the ISO value to avoid sequentially go through all the interval and check whether the minimax value contains the ISO value, you can divide the value range hierarchically if you want. Now you might wonder after you sort the cell and then put them to the interval that they belong, how are you going to organize the cells to further improve the search speed? This is necessary because maybe a interval contain a good number of cells search through those cells sequentially can still take a lot of time for large data set. The solution is to sort the cell based on certain properties. Because we know we're trying to find the cells that min max value contain the ISO value, so naturally we are going to sort the min max values. So how do we sort? One way to do this is to simultaneously sort the cells based on their min and max value. So you can keep two lists. One list is to sort the cells based on their maximum value. So in the example here, M5 is a cell that has the minimal maximum value. And then we sort them, so M9 on the right is a cell that has largest maximum value. And the list at the bottom is the sorted cell list based on their minimum value. Given these two sorted lists, if we want to identify cells that have min maximum value contain the ISO value C, first of all, we can check the maximum value list to identify all the cells that have their maximum values greater than ISO value C. Here I denote it as G1. And then we go to the minimum sorted list and we want to identify all the cells that have minimum value less than the ISO value. Here I denote it as G2. So what we're going to need is to find cells that simultaneously have maximum values greater than the ISO value and minimum value smaller than ISO value, we can simply perform a intersection for those two cells. So the G1 and the intersect with G2, the resulting cells will satisfy the criteria that their min max value contain the ISO value. That is, their maximum values are greater than the ISO value and their minimum values are smaller than the ISO value. This simple range subdivision scheme is actually very difficult to make an algorithm optimal. This is because each cell has a range. So it is very difficult to divide the entire value range in a clean way such that each cell will only belong to one interval. When cells belong to multiple interval, the search process is going to be complicated and it is difficult to design an optimal algorithm. Below, I'm going to talk about a beta scheme to solve this range subdivision problem. So now let me introduce another method to perform ISO surface cell search. ISO surface cell search is essentially a range search problem. Remember what we need to do is to find cells that have minimum value smaller than ISO value. 
maximum value greater than the ISO value. In order to perform efficient cell search, we need to have an effective representation for the cells. Earlier, we treat each cell as an interval created from the minimal and the maximum value, but the interval is very difficult to divide. But if we take another look at the cells, each cell has a minimum value and a maximum value, so we can actually treat each cell as a point, as shown in the diagram at the bottom of this slide. The x-axis is the minimum value, and the y-axis is the maximum value. Because each cell has mean, minimum and maximum value, we can plot a cell as a point in this space, and we call this span space. You might wonder how come all the points are above the diagonal line. This is because the maximum value of a point is always greater than the minimum value, and the diagonal line represents mean equal to max, so that's why all the points are above the diagonal line. The concept of span space provides the opportunity to divide the 2D space in a more effective way. This is because each cell is only a point, so you can always divide the cells into different groups in a very clean way. So let's look at more detail in the span space. Assuming we have an ISO value C, now how do we find all the cells that have maximum value above C and the minimum value below C? First of all, in this 2D space, C corresponds to a point along the diagonal line. So we can easily identify the cells that have maximum value greater than the C. This is the point in this shaded half space. Also, the cells need to have minimum value smaller than the ISO value C. There are the cells on the left-hand side of this half space. The cells that simultaneously satisfy both conditions are the intersection of those two shaded areas, as shown here. So these points are clearly the ISO surface cell. So as you can see, mapping the cell an interval mean max value to a point on this plane space it makes it very easy for us to identify the sub-area in this mean max value space where we have isosurface cells. So now, after the representation of the cells in span space, the next thing we need to figure out is how do we search the isosurface cell given a iso value. Basically, what we need to do is to organize the cells in such a way that we can easily find out those points in the shaded area I showed in the previous slide. So there are multiple methods being proposed in the past that can all be very efficient in searching the isosurface cells. The common approach of those methods is to subdivide the span space and store the cells efficiently. The first method I'm going to talk about is the KD tree subdivision. KD tree is a common data structure used in spatial data processing. Essentially, it's a multi-dimensional version of a binary tree. Given a multi-dimensional space, every time you pick a dimension, and then you subdivide the space in half. And then you alternate dimensions. For example, if you just subdivide the space along the x direction, and the next subdivision is, is going to be along the y direction. And then you subdivide space in z direction, and so on and so forth. So now let's look at how KD tree can be used to search small space and find isosurface cells. So starting from a root that contains the entire span space, we're going to first of all find out the median point of the minimum value, and use that to divide the space into two halves. This means we're only going to divide the space along the minimal axis. Then, in each of the halves, we're going to find the median of the point's maximum values, and then for each of the subtree, we'll perform another division. But this time, we are subdividing along the max axis. From the tree here, you can see that now we have four leaf nodes. We're going back to use the minimal value to perform subdivision in each of the leaf nodes. And now we create A nodes. And you continue to do that until only one point is in the final leaf node. And doing this, you complete the KD subdivision of the spawn space. Now let's look at how do we use the KD subdivision of spawn space to identify isosurface cells. Let's pay attention to the root node in this example. So remember the cells in the left subtree have minimum values smaller than the median minimum value used by this root node. And all the cells in the right subtree have their minimum value greater than the median point of the mean value. So if the ISO value that user specified is smaller than this median value, here I say root dot mean because 
minimal value is what used to divide the space into two halves. Then we know because all these cells in the right subtree have their minimal value greater than the iso value. So there's no chance that they are going to intersect with the iso surface. We can only focus on the left subtree and we can reject immediately all the cells in the right subtree. Now, if the iso value is greater than the median point of the root, that is the mean value, then both subtrees, the cells within, can have the minimum value smaller than the iso value. So we need to search both subtrees. And uh, we can go down to both of the left and right subtrees, and then we apply the same algorithm, but this time now we are going to use the maximum value to compare with the iso value. So now let's go down to the next level. That is, we are going to compare the iso value with the median value of the current root, which is a maximum value from the cell. Now, in the case that the iso value is greater than the median max value stored in the root, and we know because all the left subtree, the cells we think have the maximum value smaller than the median, so we know all the cells in the left subtree, their maximum value is not greater than the iso value, so they can be rejected. We only need to check the right subtree. We're going to go down to the subtree of the current node, and we go back to check the minimum value stored in the root node. In the case that the iso value is smaller than the median max value stored in the current root, then the cells in both the left and right subtree have a chance to have a greater maximum value than the iso value. So we have to check both subtree. And we go down to the next level, and then we go back to use the median of the minimum value stored in the root which means we are going to use the algorithm steps I mentioned in the previous slide. So this pretty much complete the search algorithm based on KD subdivision of some space. Although I'm not presenting a pseudocode for the entire algorithm, I hope it's clear now to you how the algorithm works and then you can write your own pseudocode. So know that there actually are other efficient algorithms proposed in the past to subdivide the span space. Uh, one example is the issue algorithm, so where the span space is being divided into 2D lattice elements, as shown in the example. For ISO value specified the user, the advantage of using lattice element is that you can quickly collect the region that is clearly within this rectangle that defines ISO service cells without doing any search. And then you can go to the vertical stripe and the horizontal stripe. If you sort the cell by their minimum value and maximum value accordingly, you can perform a logarithmic search. Basically, the gray area here, there's no search involved, so it's all of one complexity. And then the yellow and the red region, you only need to perform a logarithmic complexity search. And then for this small area, because usually there are not too many cells, you can perform simple sequential search or even use the noise algorithm I just mentioned to perform efficient search. So now let me uh, talk about an ISO service cell search algorithm that is not based on the spawn space concept. The data structure is called interval tree. And the, the goal here again is to search all the cells that have the minimum value lower than ISO value and the maximum value greater than ISO value. Here is how it works. First of all, we are going to sort all the data points in your data set. We present it here as x1, x2, all the way to xn. And then we pick the median point, delta. And then we use this median point to divide the cells into three sets. The set of i delta contains all the cells that have minimum value less than delta and maximum value greater than delta. And then the left subtree contain all the cells that have their maximum value smaller than the delta, and the cells in the right subtree have their minimum value greater than the delta. In the example here, I show a root and the two subtrees. What you're going to do is you go to each of the subtrees, and then you create an interval tree recursively within the subtree. How this very simple interval tree can be used to find isosurface cells? So I'm going to present you the algorithm, and I want you to spend some time think about why the algorithm is designed this way. Remember, at every level, the root node has a delta value, and also has all the cells that have minimum value less than delta and maximum value greater than delta stored in the current root. Assuming we have iso value C, so what you're going to do is, first of all, you compare 
your C value, the actual value, with the delta value that define the root of the current label. If C is less than delta, then you are going to reject the right subtree and search only the left subtree plus check the cells in the current root that satisfy the isosurface criteria that is the minimum value less than C and maximum value greater than C. For the left subtree, you are going to apply the same algorithm presented in the slide recursively. For the current root node, you can simply sort the cells by their minimum value and then you find the first cell whose value is greater than C, then you reject the rest of it. Now, if isovalue C is greater than delta, you can reject the left subtree. You're going to present the algorithm shown in this slide recursively to the right subtree, plus you are going to check again the cells contained in the root node and find the cells that satisfy the criteria that minimum value less than C and the maximum value greater than C. This can be done by sorting the cells in I delta by maximum values and then reject any cells that have their maximum value less than C. And finally, the case that if C happens to be equal to delta, then you take all the cells in I delta and then terminate the current recursive branch. So now you can look at the first case, why this algorithm works, and you, I want you to think about the rest. The reason we can easily reject the right subtree if the isovalue C is less than delta is because all the cells in the right subtree have their minimum value greater than delta. Because C is less than delta, that means all the cells will have their minimum value greater than the ISO value. So clearly, they are not ISO service cells. The same reason is going to apply to the case two. And I'd like you to think a little bit by yourself. This algorithm is actually declared to be the optimal algorithm because without considering the cost to create such a tree, the search complexity is log n plus k, where the k is the size of the isosurface cell set, and the n is the total number of cells. Because this is a search algorithm, so an algorithm with logarithmic complexity is usually the best that you can do. So compared to margin cubes algorithm, all the three search algorithms that I presented just now are much faster. Sometimes it can be two order magnitude faster than the margin cubes algorithm. However, you need to keep in mind that they all come with a cost. For every cell, you need to store the min max value, and also you need to sort them in different ways. So you need to store the extra data that somewhat make your data set bigger, and also the pre-processing time some kind can be an issue. To avoid the storage and the pre-processing cost, another method that can be used to speed up ISO service cell search and the extraction is to perform contour propagation. Here, I will just give you a basic idea without much algorithmic details. Basically, what we need to do is, given the ISO value, you first of all identify an initial cell, A in this example. You compute the ISO contour segment within a cell, and then because the ISO survey is going to propagate to the neighbor, you create a queue and enqueue your neighbors. In the example here, after you compute the segment ISO contour in A, you enqueue B and C. Then you perform a breadth search. Let's get B out and then compute the segment of ISO contour within the cell. After B is done, the contour is going to keep propagating. So we are going to enqueue B's neighbor D. At this point, the queue has both C and D to be processed. And you can continue to perform contour propagation without actually doing any explicit search of ISO service cells. Using this kind of method, while you don't have to store the min-max value and the sort the cells, there are also some challenges. One challenge is that you need to identify the initial cells. For a given ISO value, finding the initial cell that certainly contains the ISO surface conceptually is as difficult as finding the ISO service cells. You could, of course, search the entire domain to find cells that you can use as the seed, that is the initial cell. Of course, this is slow. So there are previous research that propose solutions to solve the C set finding problem. They try to find out the minimum set of cells that can be used as the initial cells for any given isocontour values. And this set is supposed to be much smaller than the entire set. So 
to identify an initial set of cells is going to be much cheaper. Okay, so this concludes the topic of finding isosurface cells and the algorithm I mentioned above, if you want to know more detail, this page provides all the references.